Schaefer is Vice President of Sales and Marketing. I would like to welcome everyone to today's WebLink Web Portal webinar. Before I introduce today's presenter, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. Because of the number of attendees we have on today's webinar, everyone's phones will stay on mute. If you have any questions during the webinar, please enter them into the question window that you see in the lower right of your screen. We'll try to answer everyone's questions during the Q&A session at the end of the webinar, but if we're unable to get to your questions, we'll follow up with you individually after the webinar. Today's webinar is being recorded. As soon as the recording is available, we'll post it on our website and send you an email to let you know when it's available to be downloaded. On that note, I would like to introduce Lisa Marley, our professional service consultant that's uh, been working with our WebLink product since we introduced it. On that note, uh, go ahead and take it away, um, Lisa. OK. so. Um, as Tom stated, today we're going to be walking through um, our new web link feature. Um, and so I'm going to start out with um, what our agenda is. So I'm going to introduce you to what web link is, give you kind of an overall perspective of what it's going to do. Um, we're going to do a demonstration of real-time interface between DM2 software and a web link portal, uh, the website pipeline portal, and then review how do you get started with a project, and then follow up with any questions that you may have. So, what is WebLink? WebLink is a communication vehicle where we take information that's in our back office software. So it's sales order invoices, sales orders, customer statements, and we're pushing them up to a website for customers to do self-service with. Because in this day and age, more, more and more people want to be able to get the data, when, you know, information real time when they want it on demand, not have to call into your office, talk to a customer service rep, and have someone send it out. So we're integrating the two systems um, in real time. What does WebLink give you? Well, WebLink will give you daily customer and fuel, uh, dealer fuel pricing. So this is the wholesale price quotes, as well as car lot price quotes. Another, op another piece of information that we're pushing out is going to be the customer dealer EFT notification, so AREFT. Anytime you know, you're going to generate a, a EFT draft notification, we can push those notifications out to the portal as well. Dealer credit card batches. So when we're bringing in DTN credit card files and we're creating those cash receipts batches, we can push that information out to the portal. Account statements. So part of your standard period in processing, generating AR statements, we can send those out. We also have information tabs that allow customers to see what are their open invoices, as well as historical invoices, and sales orders. They can see account information, so their billing address, their contact information. And then there's an optional feature that allows customers to pay their invoices online. So what are the setups? Uh, they couldn't possibly be easier. Uh, we're using the standard Outbox document, uh, Outbox contact maintenance, and just like we would normally set up either an email or fax recipient, we're just choosing another new option, which is WebLink. We do this on a document by document basis. So any document that you would, you know, any of the documents I mentioned earlier from the drop down, you would you'd be able to choose those and select WebLink. From there, it's just a matter of um, your standard processing. There's no extra steps when you're going through a document printing process. So say you're printing sales order invoices. At the point in time where you are printing them and you see that pop-up box that says sending to Outbox, at that time, it's generating that notice, a PDF on, on your system, and it's providing a link out to that website that then allows 
users to see it in this notifications tab. So as you can see from here, this is a screenshot of what what the website would look like, and you're going to see a you know have the ability to show filter it by notification date. Notification date is the system date that when someone's sending it actually out. And you're going to see notification types. So we see statements. We see AREFT, silver invoices. All of them are there. And then depending on what type of document we're sending out is what name it's given. So like on the card lock invoice, we can see CL38145. That's our document number. Any of these column headers that you see, so where you see the label of notification types, notification dates, name, you can sort those ascending and descending. So they're typical um, functionality that you'd expect to see in a dynamic table. Now when you see the, the, the actions, you can see where you have the options for view or PDF. PDF will spawn a new window that pops up and you can see your document. View has limited capability. View would actually spawn in the same window what that document is, but it does not display crystal-based forms. So if you're working with any forms that are crystal, which our newer framework documents are, you will, uh, your customers will be accessing it through the PDF link. There's three other tabs that are important. The sales orders tab, the in open invoices, and the invoice history. Each one of them displays relevant information. They have search capabilities, and they have sorting capabilities. And then depending what, what tab you're on controls what your actions are. So for example, in invoice history, it's paid, it's closed. You know, we, um, we're, we're only viewing them. Whereas when we look at open invoices, if you have the optional online payment feature, you can actually provide your customers a link to pay that invoice at that time. When you're actually on an invoice and you're viewing it, this is the kind of information that you're going to see. This is the drill down, where you can see it's organizing by the general information, the open invoice amount. Notice that if you have the optional payment uh, feature, you get a pay now button, which will will spawn that that screen to allow that customer to select um, the invoices they want to pay, and you also get a recap down at the bottom of what was on the invoice. So in this case, um, I can see I shipped 12 items of this Rotella T15W40, and then I can see a recap of what would I expect to see at the bottom of my invoice, so my net invoice, my taxable, my non-sales taxable, um, and my total invoice. So now for the demo. So we are going to switch over to this machine. And so this is a real live demo uh, website. And we have our math. So for example, if I wanted to send a customer statement, I'm just going to pick one here. And I'm going to go in the shortcut way of just going in through customer maintenance. So I'm sending one statement for this customer. And this customer has a setup that says, for AR statements, we want to send out a web link. So I'm getting a box that's popping up and saying, export to outbox. And I'm done. Um, depending on your network, there can be a little bit of a delay between when it shows up in the portal and when it doesn't. But for the um, for most part, it's, it's pretty quick. So I'm going to go to my notifications tab here. 
and here's my statement. I can see it's based on my notification date of 7-11-2013. If I want to sort it, I can sort it. There it is at the top. I'm going to go ahead and click on my PDF link, and here it is. This is exactly as you would expect to see it going through Outbox. So if you were to set that customer up for email, it's, it's exactly like it would look that way. And from here, they have the option to print it, to save it off to their hard drive, you know, their choice. I also have some other documents out here that I've done the same thing with, um, card lock invoices. Um, wholesale price quotes, they all function the exact same way. So there is no extra step for any user to take after the initial setup. So for example, I will go into my wholesale price quote generation. I'll set my parameters. I'm just changing my printer. It won't actually print, but I want don't want it to send it to the PDF creator. So I'm printing it now. We have our pop-up that says exporting to Outbox. And then we'll see if it shows up here right away. And there we go. Here's my wholesale price quote. So I'll click on my PDF link. And here's my quote. So since these are um, crystal-based forms, they're going to look exactly like your form is designed to be printed. You have the option to use web link in conjunction with standard email and faxing out methods, so you, you're not limited to one or the other. And now we'll look at our sales order tabs. As you can see, I can see my order numbers, my order dates, what my status is. Is it a quote? Is it active? Is it completed? I see an order total. If there happens to be a PO number for on, on, the doc, on the order, then we'll see it there. And then I have the option to view it. When I view it, I can see not only the, the generic information regarding it, I can see if there's any invoices attached to it. So if I had invoiced this, I would see that, that invoice number down here. Let's see if we can find a completed one. Here we go. So here's an example of a sales order that was had a completed status, so it means we've invoiced it. I can see my invoice date, what the total invoice was, whether it's an open invoice or it's a paid invoice, what the balance is, and when its due date is. On my open invoices tab, I have an optional pay now. So if I was to come in and view this invoice, looks a lot like the sales order, but it's the invoice perspective of it, of what did we actually deliver. And here's the optional pay now. If I was to click pay now, it brings up a list of all my open invoices, and I can simply choose which ones I want to grab. I have the option of overpaying or short paying an invoice.
and then I can use an existing credit card on file, or I can choose this option to put a new credit card on file. And then last but not least, we have an invoice history tab. that is um, very similar to open invoices. We also have the option of account overview where I can look at my general information as well as my addresses. And my understanding is from website pipeline is these fields can be controlled as to what you have your customers, whether they can see it or whether they can actually edit it. So now that we have, you know, we've been through that, uh, the, the functionality, the question is, how do you get started? To get started with the web portal, you would contact DM2 sales department, and they will, they will be able to provide you with demonstrations, brochures, price sheets. You know, they're going to want to talk to you about what your specific needs are. Uh, to provide you with a, a quote. You would place an order with Website Pipeline as well as uh, contact DM2 to order the web link uh, module that allows us to interface the two back offices. Lisa, can you go uh, full screen on that slide? Oh, sorry. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so, um, so once you've placed your order with, with both companies, um, you'll work with Website Pipeline to build and design your website. It is infinitely configurable. They allow you to um, do a, a, a multitude of things and customize it so that you're not just having some boilerplate template. The, you can have it as, you know, as much or as little functionality as you want. You can even integrate a full e-commerce website with it but you, will, you would work directly with them to do that. And then the last piece is you'll need to work with DM2 Professional Services to retrofit the web link feature into your, your math software. It is, uh, website pipeline can work with version 3.7.1 and higher. Uh, there is, if you are below version 4.4, you do need a thinking tool to allow math and our and the website pipeline to communicate so on some of the older legacy modules. Who do you contact? Well, at DM2, your primary contact should be Anthony Rodriguez, and I've provided his email address. And then there's our phone number. Website pipeline, uh, there's their address, their website address. You know, they have some, some uh, sample websites and, and existing customers to see what, what their work is like, as well as their contact phone, phone number. So, um, Tom, I'll uh, hand it over to you. Okay, thank you, Lisa. And one uh, thing that's important to note on the previous slide is um, Anthony can be your single point of contact to get this going. Uh, he'll coordinate with the website pipeline folks to set up demonstrations and go through needs analysis so they can identify exactly what you need in the, in the form of your portal features there. Uh, now, before we get into the, uh, the Q&A session, I'd like to uh, put in a plug for next month's webinar. 
Uh, next month, we're going to be featuring the new Sage Inventory Advisor um, service. This is a web-based service that ties into your system and pulls your inventory data over and gives you an analysis tool that can help you reduce your inventory, uh, help you reduce your working capital, as well as improve your, your fill rates and reduce the time you spend on forecasting. Uh, this is a fairly new product for Sage, but it's been available uh, from another software author for quite some time. So Sage has taken this on as a Sage product. So we'd like to introduce you to that. Uh, joining us uh, will be uh, uh, the product marketing manager for Sage to give the presentation. And we're also going to have Wes Johnson. He's the controller of Huber Glass Oil, who is a current DM2 customer that's been using this for about a year now. And Les is going to share his experience and let you know how um, Sage Inventory Advisor has helped transform Huber Glass's purchasing process and has already saved them $300,000 in, in uh, inventory. So we'll look forward to uh, having you join us for that. And I will be sending out a, an invitation for you to register for that webinar as soon as this webinar is over. So now we're ready for the Q&A session. We've got a number of questions that have come in, Lisa. Uh, the first one is from Jason over at Coleman. Uh, Jason's asking, how do customers know when a new document is available? Do they receive an email saying something to the effect um, that you've received a new invoice? No, there is, there is no email um, that feature that I know of. It is a completely self-service uh, portal, so a customer is going there. Though, if you wanted a customer to receive some sort of email, you could also set them up through Outbox to receive an email copy of it, which would also allow trigger um, trigger them to know that there, there's something out there on the website for them. Now, that's not to say that there's not that capability. Um, that it's something that we could possibly talk to website pipeline to see if that's something that through custom programming they can do. They've said that they're very open to to ideas and are happy to talk to people about what can be done. But the stock offering does not send out any any email notifications. Okay, thanks Lisa. We've got another question from Jason. Uh, he's asking, does the credit card transaction take place immediately? Yes, they are directly interfaced with Sage Payment Solutions as well as the uh, some other processors. Depending on which one you go with depends on the level of integration with Mass. Obviously, the Sage Payment Solutions is is real time. It's within Mass as well as um, their virtual terminal. So we're hitting we're hitting the uh, all the proper places and doing you know it does the uh, proper accrediting for it, um, but yeah, you're real-time authorizing stuff. Okay, thank you. All right, the next question has come in from Lay over at Cardwell. Uh, Lay's asking if um, you have the opportunity or the option to pay using ACHs. Okay. so. ACH is not there at this time. Website pipeline was saying that it was a it was a limitation of Sage Payment Solutions at that time um, back in October, I believe. But they were working with them to find a solution for it, and they were also exploring other processors' availability to do ACH. So they are looking at it, and, and they've had a lot of requests for it. So it's not out of the realm of possibility. OK, thank you. All right, the next question is from Tomas. Um, he is asking, is there a demo username and password for the, for the uh, link that you had in should be a demo site there. I I have not tested it recently. I can send that out to all people interested. Um, the last I had known, there was a user of zero zero two 
1093 and the Password was one two three four five six. And uh, but I have not one, tested that one. Sure. And one thing that's important to note is it's it's really not a self guided demo uh, like we have with our e card link product. Uh, that's something that we would normally have our sales reps and the website pipeline walk customers through. So if you're interested in in you know getting a you know one on one specific demonstration for your application, we can set that up. You can just contact Anthony Rodriguez to get that going. All right, here's another question from Lay. She's asking if our company already has a newly redesigned website, can they still add the web link integration? Yes, a web website pipeline will work with you in any level. They can either do the entire site or they can do just the DM2 portal and, and integrate the, the two together. So they do do hosting and they do work with you on, on your own existing sites. Okay, excellent. All right, the next question is from Annie over at Coleman. She's asking, can customers pay with a method other than credit cards, such as check? That goes along with that ACH. And that is that is something they're exploring, but it's not there at this time. Okay, very good. All right, that looks like all the questions we have. Oh, actually, we just got another question in from Chris over at TextCon. Uh, he's saying, I may have missed it, but is the website customizable so it can be made to match our public and I assume it ended there, but I assume it meant their, their public website. So matching the theme, yes. Yes, definitely. Yeah, uh, website pipeline is really good at making it look like it's all uh, lock, stock, and barrel part of the same website. Yeah, what you, what you see on, uh, on the demo website is just the bare bones vanilla, but the look and feel of it can change radically depending on on how you set it up and how it's designed with with website pipeline. And they do uh, include what's referred to as a content management system, so you can go in and make changes to you know some of the verbiage that you have on there. So all that stock information you saw on our our demo site is actually easily user customizable or considerable. Yeah, they, they they provide you like a in that content editor. They allow they have it where it's a what you see is what you get. So once you launch it, they call it Web Driver. You can go in and change the you can change the font. You can change the color. You can change the actual text that's in there. And then as soon as you save the changes, it immediately applies to the website. So you're not once you have your website designed, you're not beholden to always contacting them to make those changes. Right, exactly. Gives you some autonomy. All right, that looks like all the questions we have for today. I just want to remind everybody that today's webinar has been recorded. Once the recording is available, we'll post it along with a copy of today's presentation on our website and then send you a message to let you know when they're available to be downloaded. If you can think of any other questions, feel free to email us at sales at dm2.com. Would you mind going to the next slide, Lisa? Right, you can see, um, you know, I'm sure you'll think of questions after we get off the uh, webinar here. If you do think of any, uh, send them in to sales at dm2.com, and I'll make sure that they get answered. I'd like to thank Lisa for doing a great job presenting today. So thank you, Lisa. And I'd like to thank everyone for attending today's WebLink Web Portal webinar. That concludes today's webinar. Thank you very much.